what topics would you like me to cover today? Innocence, good, okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, what topics? Inno innocence, yes. Hold on. Hold on. Heart what? Okay. W one over there said something. Choosing how to serve humanity. New pathways. Relationships. One sec. Hold on. Okay. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Jeez. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, last week um, the topic of innocence came up. And laughter is really good as a part of innocence. And it's really, to me, it's really sad that we came into this world and found every reason conceivable to, to shut our hearts and to, to stop laughing and so on. And that's sad, right? It's tragic, really. But if you think about it, it's, it's kind of like expected or predictable that if we think we separated from love, God, that you're going to carry some stuff, you know, shames, guilts, um, unworthiness. So. One of you asked about heart walls. You know, that's what that's all about. It's, it's like there's a part of us that wants to hide from not just God, but if you are God, then you're really hiding from yourself. So people are on earth spending a fortune to take workshops on relationships, you know, the seminars, the two-day seminars and all that. And it's, it's preposterous because all you're doing is talking about symptoms. How can I fix this symptom, that symptom, you know, blah, 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 you know, Venus and Mars and all these ridiculous concepts that people make millions off of. Bec why? Well, first of all, they make millions because people are suffering. They need answers. It's just that those aren't the answers. If, if I don't know why I'm suffering, why I project onto you, even nonviolent communication, all these things are sexy. They're cool. They're fun. Go do what you want to do. But none of them are going to work long term. Because they don't involve me looking at myself. Why am I projecting? Well, here's a way you can talk and tell your partner. You know, I'm just, I'm just feeling a bit unloved right now because you burned my toast. And I'm just expressing from my heart the way the workshop told me to. It's like I'm back to violent communication, man. Because what you're telling me is ridiculous. But no, that's not the way you'd respond, uh, of course. You know, you got to go. <laughs> Please, um, I honor the unburnt toast in you and um, the, you know, my soul wants to say, I, I really apologize. Please forgive me. Namaste. Namaskgo or whatever. <laughs> you know. You, there's all these things, but really, at the end of the day, we're hurting inside. It's not that you're annoying me because you burnt my toast. You know what it is, honey? Sit down. Let me tell you. The toast burns. That's the fifth time you did it this week. But it isn't that. It's that I feel separate. I'm living under the same roof and we're miles apart. I don't know how, who I am. I don't know how to tell you how I feel. I can tell you how I think I feel which is thinking and feeling, which isn't real. You know, when I tell you, you know, I want to know your heart, that, that involves buying candy and flowers. Knowing my heart, there's no candy and flowers. It's this, man, this opening of, I don't know exactly who I am. Here's where I hurt. Can you hold that for me? Can you hold space for me while I share my soul? So all the human things are really just symptomatic. 
And one of you asked about new paths, pathways, and one of you clearly you asked about relationships. Thriving during challenges. You can't without being a responsible person. You have to tell your partners, lovers, dates, etc., whenever it's the right appropriate time, to be able to say, listen, I cannot promise you perfection. And I can't promise you the answer to all your problems. What I can promise you is that I will not take my stuff out on you. I'm making it part of my life and lifestyle to look within as often as I can. See, and that's actually good news. That should be like, wow, not, oh, you bought me flowers. It should be, wow, honesty, clarity, vulnerability. You know, I'm digging this. And are you okay if I share the same thing? Yes, yes, let's do that. Let's share. You know, hearts opening. This concept, one of you brought up and reminded me last week, we touched on it, innocence. It's, once again, humans, man. You know, humans, they, what's innocence? Oh, it's, it's a white dress on your wedding day. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Look at the witches. They just wear black. They're like, I'm out. <laughs> white dress, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> right? <laughs> They fly in on a broom in a black dress. He knows what he's getting. <laughs> Help me. I mean, you know, but I'm, I'm, honestly, it isn't, it isn't virgins. It isn't children. You know, children are so innocent. They're not. They're not. They just haven't developed all the skill sets yet. They're sitting there when they can't talk, and they're just, you know, they're sitting there going, I, I am so coming after you as soon as I can talk. <laughs> I'm going to share my feelings <laughs> about all of this. <laughs> you and dad. Why does the baby need to, like, sleep in the same bed? Because it knows what's going on. It doesn't want this happening. Mom's always complaining, Dad's a terrible lover. I'm going to just cry at night until they put me between them. <laughs> anyway. So, we, we can all agree that oneness with God is, a, is an incredible goal. It's like the ultimate goal, right? Oneness. Not separation. Oneness. <sighs> there we go. Let's, yeah, let's go for oneness. How do you get there? I can promise you, no books. No things on the material planet, no diet makes you one with God. Even meditation is only sort of a, a way of getting your heart quiet so that it opens up like a mirror so the light of God can shine onto it. But you're still on earth. Nothing on earth, nothing on earth can restore you to your innocence, which is your divinity, except forgiveness. And some of us are like, oh, I wanted a different word, you know. <laughs> I've been to three forgiveness seminars, and I read a couple of forgiveness books. I wanted something new. That's because you're sick. You have problems. There's only one solution. Don't get tired and bored of hearing the word forgiveness. It's the only ticket out. Well, I've already, you know, studied that word, and I you know, took a class. On, no, don't get bored and don't get tired of it. It never ends. The last moment. The last judgment that Christians call the last judgment before, you know, boom, everything ends and you go home. The last judgment is when you have had your last judgment. Judgment day is when you decide to judge that you no longer need to judge. That's all it is. Forgiveness is the answer. It's the only answer. Because judgment makes us lose our innocence. If I find flaw with you, I no longer see you as innocent. So you're already done. But who judged you? I, now I'm not in my innocence. So we're both up creek. That's why forgiveness has to come in to restore it all. It's not just kind of a, oh, yeah, I got to forgive that person. It's not that kind of a dense level of, of an understanding of forgiveness. This is exciting to realize. I decided and choose not to have any layers of stuff on you anymore. 
I'm not going to bother seeing you flawed. I know that on earth, if I reach out to shake your hand, it's a hand that's shaking my hand. I know we're not completely home yet. But I also know that forgiveness is how I get there. Now, forgiveness doesn't actually take you all the way home. Forgiveness restores us to a perfect state of readiness. And then God reaches down and lifts you up. That's where a lot of traditions get it wrong again. The doing to get home. You cannot do enough to get back to heaven. You can't do. You get that? You have to go from doing to being to remembering. And then you're home. But you can't do to get home. It doesn't work. You can't do enough chant meditation, pranayama, etc. You can't. It's diet. Nothing of this world. You can't buy enough crystals. You can't do anything to get you home. What you can do is start living like you are home and enjoy the crystals and herbal tea and everything else. Don't do them to get home because then you imply that you're not there. So it gets very, it gets very, very tricky, this idea of all, all the things we seemingly can do. You know, this man, this, this awakens you and your divinity and all these stories. Even when you take something to go on a journey to other dimensions, you're still in other dimensions. You're not home. Home has no dimensionality. Understand this. Leaving home is where we got dementia <laughs> and started creating dimensions. You still have various levels of dementia. Oh, you know, I've heard that fifth dimensional dementia isn't as bad as third dimensional dementia. <laughs> On planet Earth, 3D, I don't know who I am. The 50 people are going, I kind of know. Wow, that sounds so admirable. Yeah, that's the fifth dimension for you. We, we kind of know. A, more of a hint. I don't want any level of dementia, and I don't want any level of dimension. I'm not looking forward just to getting to the fifth dimension or the 89th dimension. I'm not just interested in going from a dense body to a light body. I'm going home. My goal is oneness with God. I can't control that journey. I can only control my part, forgiveness. Just keep forgiving. And I don't just mean the, the same wording, the same thing. It's, it, it happens in different layers at different times. You know, it's, it's um, some days it's going to look like tearful prayer, and other days it'll look like sublime meditation, whatever form it happens to take. I've written, you know, in my forgiveness book, the book of love and forgiveness, in that book I've written how, and this is one of the simplest techniques in case you think, well, he's talking about some one hour, like I got to get in there and process and No, no. You're just walking into your kitchen and an image of somebody from high school popped into your mind. I'm telling you, send them love and forgiveness. You don't have to like drop to your knees and do a prayer and money, you know, chant, 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 chant. Blessed incense, bull, you just love you, brother, sister, love you. All else I release. Now, if you can do all the other things, that's fun, that's cool. But don't make complexities that'll keep you from practicing the simplicities. Just bless them. Your ex, you know, whomever it has to, happens to be. You know, you can have a, a boss or a former partner, you know. But, but remember this. Our understanding of forgiveness is really rising, 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 rising. And when you think about true forgiveness, when you think about forgiveness, the concept of forgiveness, somebody's wronged you. On a linear level, if you were to watch the news or watch a video of your, your home security system and, and somebody walked up and kicked you in the leg and it's on video on a linear planet, that person wronged you. But watch this, this is kind of cool if you think about it. There are false forms of oneness. There are false forms. People actually try to be intimate with other people because deep down they want to become one with something so they choose someone to join sensually with and yet they don't know how to do it. So they leave hollow again. None of these sexual relationships are fulfilling because you can't get what you think you're there for. And most people don't even know they're there for that. They think they're there for pleasure. But subconsciously, you want to join and become one with people, yourself and God again. So even intimacy is a, is a statement of something greater. But people forget that. God, just drop that in. 
Uh, I'm choosing to be intimate. And I don't care whatever else you could be doing. I'm gardening my garden. I'm, 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 you know, getting my wardrobe together today. Anything you do, do with God. Ask to feel that presence. So when you're making love, it's not to be with a person. It's joining. So ask God, how would you have me see this person? Not, I'm attracted only. Try to go to a prayerful level. That doesn't mean you have to go, oh, wait, hold on. You know, they're going to be like, okay, I'm done. You know, I'm not saying you have to like do like some really tripped out stuff, but just in here, just in here, as you start to join with a person, just one thought, let me see them as they really are. Let us experience this thing as it really is. Joining. Doesn't mean you can't move. It can't, doesn't mean you can't feel things. J but just surrender it, then do whatever else. Invite spirit in, then do whatever else. Well, doesn't the doing, you know, no, no. You've already sanctified it to a new level. And that's a good start. Just as one example. But when we think people have harmed us, here's an interesting piece to that. Again, there's false forms of innocence. There's false forms of oneness, rather. Like joining with somebody. We're married. Let the two be as one, the minister says upon the altar, you know. And, oh, this is cool. It, none of it's true. They don't know how to make two as one unless they ask God to help them do it. The workshop isn't going to tell you how to do it. And you certainly aren't going to be able to pull it off on your own. Let, you know, how do I become one? You can meditate and imagine it. That starts programming it in your consciousness. There are things you can do. Forgiveness, it's instantaneous. You're already sort of hardwiring, for lack of a better phrase for it, yourself back home. Because if I don't have judgments, I am one. Judgment separates me from you. Non-judgment joins me with you. So there's, that's, you know, there we are. But there's false forms of oneness. Now, when I say false, they're not all bad. They're not all harmful, but some are. The synthetic versions, you know, the LSD versions, the whatever else, you know, that we do to try to become one. Uh, it's okay, because deep down you're really showing that you want something beautiful. But the things of this world aren't going to get you there. Is it bad to do them? No. The, the ones that are the healthiest that you can think of, fine. But don't think that they do it for you. You have to show up and experience this. Now, that said, there's false forms of oneness. Guys, there's also false forms of innocence. And like I said, the white dress and the, the labels, you know. Oh, I'm, I'm finding my innocence. Listen, you don't know how to find your innocence. Forgiveness restores you to your innocence. You fabricating innocence being a virgin, wearing white, doing this, being a child, those are external versions of innocence still. They are. They're not the reality. The only way you and I can get back to innocence is I've given up judging. And now I see you as you really are. We think it's like, you know, um, there was this person and they used to annoy me, but my teacher, my whatever they are, my spiritual teacher told me, just imagine that that person was once a child and was wounded, and so now you develop compassion to forgive them. Now, what you're doing is you're giving me a technique to try to see an innocent side of them. That's still not innocence because I have not released you in forgiveness. So even techniques of just imagining that the wounded child in them, that doesn't help. Picturing more woundedness in the person I want to know who you really are. I mean, this is not a physical thing. Your innocence comes from less wrinkles on your face. Your innocence comes from a smile, a sparkle in your eye. Makeup, cosmetic, dressing a certain way. Do any of those, but they don't make you innocent. They don't bring you back to your innocence. So, so there are false forms even of innocence, which is really a trip. But if you think about it, we've all dabbled in those kinds of things, trying to find that. As soon as, but so here's where it goes. The fall, the worst, like the most extreme case of false innocence. And we do this all the time. Now watch. Let's say one of you harmed me, one of you, you know, kicked me in the leg. I got video of it. So on an external level, you did harm to me, correct? Which is known as a victimizer and a victim. Good. Okay. Now watch, because 
I want to find my innocence again. Do you know what the human race does to help you find innocence? It does things to where people harm you. They're now the victimizers, and you're the victim. You're not just a victim. You're an innocent victim. So the ego has fabricated you being abused and being a victim so that you're innocent. Once you can prove that you did nothing to cause this, you're innocent. You can go to court and be found innocent. Oh, that's cool. This is great. I'm, they confirmed it. I'm innocent. So the world has its ways, but do you understand how demented that is to, to only identify with innocence based on the world's version? Meaning someone harms you? That means you now have to start programming. I want people to hurt me without cause so that I can prove that I'm what? Innocent. There you go. Isn't that bizarre? Oh, money, pod me. Morning, good morning, Father, Mother, God. Please let me have three traumas today so that I can feel like I'm innocent. That's demented. But everybody's subconsciously doing it. You do not have to find or experience false levels of forgiveness. Well, that's all I know how to do. I mean, what am I going to... No, no, I'm just... I really am innocent and just think it, feel it, pray it. You know, it wouldn't hurt, but it still doesn't do it. Forgiveness. I'm signing people up to be my victimizers. I'm signing people up to traumatize me so that I can remain the innocent one. And something I started saying just a couple years ago, I don't need drama to be loved. That just came to my mind one day. And this is you and me. I don't need trauma and victimization to be innocent. You see what I mean by that? I actually don't need any of that. The ego will not let you get away with that, typically, and very easily. You can't just go, well, uh, uh, I, I'm innocent. Listen, God is flawless. God is, you know, the perfection, the love. I'm made in God's image, so I have this innocence. Now, go anywhere on this planet. Go to your family members. Go to your ex. Go anywhere on the planet. Go into a court when you've, when you've had a, just a simple traffic ticket and try to tell this world, you're mistaken. I am completely innocent. You know, the judge is just going to look over his glasses. Is that all you have to say? <laughs> yes. And you can even go, as though the angels <laughs> arrived while you made your statement. And the judge just, $100 fine for the ticket, 200 for wasting our time. You go to anybody on this planet and tell them about your innocence, they won't buy it. And that sounds rude and cruel, and it is kind of insensitive of them. But you know what? You're mistaken because you're trying to use things of this world to establish your innocence. There's a part of you made in God's image. God has no flaw. Innocence does not mean no blemish. It means no desire to judge. Jesus says in A Course in Miracles, my mother pulled off something very unique. She was able to be intimate and have children, because she even had some after Jesus. Um, you know, but... She was in a state of innocence. She was able to be intimate without judgment, without thought. So she was being immaculate even in something as dense as that act, something that most people can't bring love into, true, true love. I think it would be great, guys, that if we could just give permission. Can, can, you know, I just feel so much love. A flower goes, I feel so much love. Fragrance. You know, just, oh, you know, and there's nobody going, who do you think you are? <laughs> you know, the roses are allowed. Other things are allowed, you know. There's a beauty and a fragrance, a, a, a fresh forest and so on. There's a, a fragrance, but fragrance is a, a dense thing. Beyond the fragrance, there's a light under that flower. When that flower comes out and leaves fragrance and you go, I love that, there's a light that's even more beautiful than the fragrance that usually can't be seen or perceived by the human senses. But all of this, this is us. We're, we're capable of saying, 
I just am, but, but it means if I feel that good, I feel as good as a rose blooming. I, I, it, for me, it tends to make me want to smile. Right? Hug, kiss. And I'm not talking about hitting on people. I'm talking about, isn't it great? Isn't this cool? You know, hugs. And, and I've told stories like that to you folks where uh, um, I just sometimes I feel just so high. What? Why is that funny? Sometimes I feel just so good. You know, and, and like at, once at my retreat center, I'll share it briefly, but this retreat we developed many years ago. And I just, you know, I came back from tour. I would always come back from tour and they'd be there like five days and they go again on three week tours, you know? So I get home and I just feel like, wow. And I show up at the airport and it's like 100 below zero, you know? And I show up in my usual swim trunks, T-shirt. I had a cop once say, I should arrest you just for the way you're dressed. That's what he said. How could you show up in this weather looking like that? And I'm like, isn't life great? I mean, just, and I'm like that. So one time we get back from tour and the, you know, the contractors had, you know, were building a retreat for people to come to do workshops. And they finished this part. And I'm like, oh man, I go out there and you know, there's these guys. <laughs> And mark that and you know there's these guys i show up i'm like hey guys good to see you again and i i got halfway through the hug and i just felt this guy and i'm like oh god help me i real honestly i for a moment i'm like uh oh i went into i'm holding this guy you know and i felt him tense and i realized <laughs> you know so i'm like yeah, yeah, man. Gosh, this is, I just turned it into like more of a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Want a beer? I don't have any. I'll have to go to the store and get it. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a drag that the world doesn't just permit, but even, even encourage joy. So we feel good, and, and, and people don't allow that all the time. They judge it. They shame it. And then we say they're, they're you know, I was, as, as a child, I was very innocent, then I got it shut down. Listen, your parents can't shut down your innocence. Your partners can't shut it down. They can sure try, and they can sure look like they're doing it. We had to decide that it was damaged. You understand? Jesus is getting beat up, and he chose not to lose his joy. He's on his way to the cross, you know, to Golgotha. And he's carrying the cross piece. And this is true. And it's in some of the lost books of the Bible. But he's carrying the cross piece. And he falls. One of the times he falls. And you've probably heard some stories like this. But there's women on the side of the road that are crying for him. Because it's a pretty morbid scene. He doesn't say, you know, would one of you mind you carrying this for me? Or, you know, he, he doesn't, you know, these damned Romans. No. You know what he said? Don't believe what you see. It's okay. Picture this dude. Picture him going through the motions because he's got to go through the motions. Feeling exhausted. He's beat up. He's falling. But inside, he's going, but you can't touch this. Do, 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 do. I, this just came to me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> can't touch this. Do, 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 do. So <laughs> I hope he, Jesus got royalties for that. But... Anyway, God, it's the costume, man. So, so um, can you imagine the grace in this person? No matter what you do, I cannot, will not choose to judge you for it. And when he's doing that, it's because he's holding his state of grace. But grace is also synonymous with a state of innocence. But how's he innocent? They're beating him up. And how's this? But no, don't tell me about the world. Tell me about my state of mind. I am in a state of innocence. How do we know that? Because I'm not judging you because I see your innocence. Again, the innocence, the divinity in you cannot harm me. It wouldn't do that. Do you agree? Think about anybody in your life that's been the most disgusting, rude. Listen, it is not their divinity. Can we agree on that? 
And if it's not their divinity doing it, and it's not your divinity that's having it happen to you. If it's not their divinity and yours, and only divine is real and eternal, then nothing that happened to you was ever real and eternal. I know it hurts while you're in the 3D. But every time you get to the other side, you're like, bloody hell, how did I not see that? I've been through this place a thousand times. And every time I go, this is real, this is real, I die and I go, you kidding me? It's an illusion. And mysticism and all that is all about trying to, I'm going in this time, I'm going in, and I'm not going to forget. And the angels are all around, and you're like, you know, without, when they're not looking, you get a pen, it's an illusion. You know, you're going to remind yourself that when you get in there, and it feels like it, you're like, in the, you know, in the womb, floating in the water. You know, I don't know why I'm doing this, but anyway. You're floating in the embryonic fluid, you know, and just, I'm getting it. They're not, it's not going to happen to me this time. I'm totally, and then the mom's bearing down and, ah, and screaming, and the dad's like himself, you know, and everybody's all, you know, and then she starts bearing down, and immediately you go from this to grabbing the pelvic bones and planting your feet. I'm not going. This isn't what I was told it would be like, because they're like, Oh, anybody, oh they're, you know, they're doing this Latin mass kind of blessing on you, and you're like, this should be easy. As soon as they start bearing down and you plant your feet on the pelvic bones and sits bones and all, you're like, man, and the mother's screaming, and it's like, oh, she can't like me when I come out. After, after what I've done, oh, and then they're trying to flip you, you know, the right way, and topsy-turvy birth. Anyway... <laughs> Actually, was failing somebody there. So, <laughs> that was like, <laughs> do you mind? <laughs> Who talks to their guides like that, huh? <laughs> it's Jesus going, yeah, good one. Um, <laughs> anyway, this painful, <laughs> I swear none of this was on my mind when I started. <laughs> But this painful experience, and, and the truth is, 3D and it feels real. I love the quote. I've repeated it probably five times in my many years here. Yogananda, yes, it's an illusion, but a dreamt head bumped against a dreamt rock brings dreamt pain. So when you're in the dream, even though this is a dream, it's a hologram, it feels real. Don't say it is real. Just say it feels real because that's true because feelings are subjective. You're allowed to feel that this is real, but try not to buy into it too much. And try not to blame, not because I'm telling you, don't you dare blame, I'm saying, think about it before you do. Is it the divine in them doing this? Obviously not. Is it the div divine in me that's having it happen? Obviously not. Then what are we doing? This is a dance of our egos. The ego in them is trying to hurt my person, my personality, my human self. But this isn't who I am. So Jesus is having these beatings and he refuses to believe it. And as you know, he gets to that point, again, in the lost books, there's a beautiful scene where the apostles are looking. Well, there's only John that had the courage to show up there, but he and Magdalene and Mother Mary. So they're at the base of the cross and they're looking. And what a horrid, anybody, anybody being crucified, horrid. But to know Jesus was here, and lived in a state of innocence. Not, he didn't laugh, and, you know, innocence, stoic. No, no. We're talking about a no judgment innocence. And he didn't retaliate. He returned love for hurt and so on. He lived all this love, 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 love stuff. And yet this guy is on the cross. He's bleeding everywhere, you know, and they're crucifying him. It's painful. It's a terrible form of death. The Romans didn't execute you in a crucifixion. You know, they didn't just, like, kill you. That would have been okay. They figured out a way to make you suffer the most, that, which is morbid in itself. They figured out a form of death that causes the longest and most painful suffering. When you're on the cross, your arms are being pulled out of their sockets and your rib contracted so you can't breathe. So you'll stand while you can. What are you standing on? A nail in your foot. That's got to hurt. But eventually, you get so fatigued, your legs won't hold you up. 
So you slowly lose the legs and you slowly suffocate yourself by kneeling. That's why it says, and when they came to him, they break your legs to finish you off. And then they puncture the heart and pericardium to make sure you're for sure dead. So he's, they've come to him and they said he already knelt down. See, because he was like, let me take care of it for you. Isn't that amazing? I don't want you to carry the guilt of having crushed my legs. Kneel and just go. I mean, it's incredible if you think about it. But you and I have to get better at that ourselves. We've got to get better at, I don't like what happened, and it doesn't feel good. You're allowed to say that. But you can also go further and say, but I'm very grateful that this isn't the real us. You, my ex, dad, mom, you know, we dance the dance of pain, the pain body, karma, reincarnation, you know, all this stuff. But it's not the real us. And then you're allowed to say and should say, you know, Father, Mother, God, let me experience. If I'm allowed to experience this, am I also allowed to experience higher? Well, then why not ask for it? So our innocence, it's, you know, the idea is this world is filled with crucifixions. Your lower chakras are basically a set of crucifixions. Your body, emotions, and intellect are all to be crucified constantly. And everybody that gets crucified, typically they die. What you're asked to do is, can you rise to another chakra here? Instead of just the human self being crucified all the time. So crucifixion is of the lower chakras. Resurrection means I have chosen to forgive you. And then I can ascend to the next three chakras. But you don't just ascend because you heard the word. Oh, a friend of mine said they're, they're ascending. Yeah, they got a certificate. <laughs> they, they went to a Ascend Now workshop. And um, it's guaranteed. They even put a wax seal on it. Come on, you know. No, that's not going to happen. You, you don't ascend without forgiveness. A forgiveness means you are ascending. You see, the word ascend means ascend to higher consciousness. The higher consciousness isn't coming from just like I read something and it's kind of insightful. That helps your mind learn. The heart is not interested in information like that. The heart wants to know, are you forgiving? Talk it down here, experience it here. So crucifixion's the lower human self, constantly crucified. We don't have to always be crucified, but it's going to happen in this world. It's a world of crucifixion. That's why the astrological symbol for Earth is an X, a circle on an X, okay? Because this place is going to kill you. You're going to die to leave here. You know, it's like warning, <laughs> poison. When beings are on the other side, they're like, you know, oh, look, you know, Saturn and other dimensions and Sirius, star system, Arcturus. Oh, look, what, that's an interesting one. Earth, don't come here. <laughs> poison. I'm curious. <laughs> Why? Are they warning us? And then you find other dysfunctional, curious people to go, let's go check it out. Because if they're warning us, there's probably, you know, cool stuff. They just want to keep it to themselves. You know, and then you're showing up and it's like, oh, oh just God, you know. Crucifixions, forgiveness, 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 forgiveness here. And then you ascend. So, a Buddhist could talk about compassion of the heart, but it isn't compassion for human suffering. I'm not sound, trying to sound irreverent, but to the Buddhist, compassion for your suffering is beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. But I'm still noticing your suffering. What about the Christian fundamental? You know, blood of Christ. You've got to understand, believe in the blood of Jesus. Oh, that sounds inspiring. I want a bleeding Savior. I know that sounds irreverent, but he's good with it, right? Okay. It's all right, it's all right. All right? You don't need a bleeding Savior. Listen, you don't need a crucified Jesus. You need a resurrected Christ. That's 
That's a good thing. And then he says, I'm going to show you how to ascend in your humanness. Then I'm going to show you how to ascend in your soul. And then you ascend and you become one with God again. But not by your effort. You can only get yourself this far. God's hand reaches down and takes you the rest of the way. That's one reason why Jesus said, as to the day and time when humanity goes home, only the Father knows. And there's reasons. He doesn't mean he has a secret. That's not what it means. But it means that there's a moment where each of us, God reaches down and lifts us the final step of the way into oneness. It's not, you can't take it by storm. You can't take it because you achieved a certificate in a workshop, oneness 101 or level three or whatever. It's, it's really, when I have nothing left to judge, I become one with the things I judged and pushed away. That's the simple math of it. Judging something means you push it away. I need to have some judgments. Otherwise, people would get too close. You see the game there in the mind? Got to, hmm, there's got to be some flaw with you. People do this to me. They do it to you. But they do it to us. Somebody can show up and go, you know, this is great. I love this talk. Come back two or three times. And you start to go, I feel something. My heart's opening. My mind. All these great testimonials that people send in. But it's interesting because there's also going to be, I need to find a fault here. I have to find a flaw with this guy. And some people, they go on the internet, oh, Michael Mirdad conspiracies or whatever, dot com, you know. Uh, um, oh, I found out, I don't know, whatever I could have ever done. But you're going to find, look for something. Why are you doing that? Why are you whispering to people? Hey, uh, do you know do you, Michael, you know, I, uh, one time he parted his hair differently. I think he's not as sweet as I thought he was. Always conjuring up. Why? Now, now as a human, it hurts us when people do that, right? But on another level, it's not hurt like that. It's sadness. It's sad to me that you would want to find fault and flaw because what that means is you don't want to go home. You're keeping yourself from heaven by finding fault with me on earth. And you want to talk ascension? Oh, yeah, man, I'm all ready, fifth dimensional. You don't like me. How are you going to the fifth dimension? You still, you still think your, your people in your past are all perpetrators and victimizers and you're innocent, which I know on a linear level it looks that way. I get it. When Buddha was teaching one time, somebody threw rocks at him. And his apostles went to him and said, Buddha, I don't understand. If you're clearing of karma, why are people throwing rocks? He switches it right to, oh, well, in a past life I did this and this, and they're just doing it back. That's called responsible behavior. Did he go, I know. Can you believe they're throwing rocks at me? I'm Buddha, and I feel really loving and compassionate. I told them, you know, all about the illusion and how they could get home, and they're throwing rocks at me. If he would have done that, he would have identified with his frail, wounded human self. And then he falls again. And that's the test you and I have to endure all the time. The real definition of innocence has nothing to do with a, a lack of flaws or having blemishes or making mistakes or tripping, having cuts, scars, aging, has nothing to do with anything of the body and it, or the material world. My innocence was determined the day I was created in the image of God. Now, I don't have to call it innocence because in God, innocence implies there's an opposite. The word innocence doesn't apply in heaven. When we say I'm in a state with God, oneness with God, it's a state of perfection, love, just purity. It's when I come to the earth and think I'm flawed that I start thinking of the opposite, the word innocence. So in the Garden of Eden, there's the tree of knowledge. But really, it's the tree of judgment and the tree of forgiveness. You see? And the tree of forgiveness restores me, oh my God, my innocence. And I close with this, that, that when you do this, you know, it's not a fancy thing that you should be trying to do. Discovering our innocence is really remembering who we really are. How can you remember who you are if you find flaw with me? Well, because I'm a good person and you're flawed. No. I know it might seem that way, 
it might seem that I, I do this and it's annoying and I, I, I understand. I'm trying to see you beyond what my senses tell me. You see? I still deal with the 3D world, I being us. I, I know I still have to deal with the 3D world. It's okay to still have a meal. It's okay to, to say, ow, when you hurt yourself. All that's fine. But do you choose to keep identifying with that? The pain body, the ow, what you did to me. You caused me to, you see, it's, it just goes and spirals downward. I am determined to know who I really am. And again, this world, guilt, shame, judgment, forgiveness takes me back to a state of innocence. And in my innocence, I'm made miracle ready. I'm made prepared for God's hand to, bring, to reach down and take my soul back to heaven, back to spirit. I don't mean death. I'm talking about awakening, fully awakening. You can't hold on to this stuff and be awake at the same time. Those are mutually exclusive concepts. Please take a few centering breaths. One of you specific, specifically asked about, you know, holding center and so forth during challenges. That's exactly the point. Don't judge yourself for having the challenges. You'll have these things. Be in the world, not of the world. You'll have these things. How can I have them and not believe in them? seems impossible but it isn't have you ever watched a movie and chose not to believe that it's actually happening that's what this world is like for a half a minute just look at the world whether it's the news walking down the street people getting older Animals passing away, trees drying up and withering. Good things too, things you like, rainbows, smiles. Look at the world for a moment. Just act like you're out walking, flying amongst it all and notice what you see. getting too attracted to it if it's a positive thing. Instead, go back over what you saw and then some other things too. Do it and recognize it's all a dream. Practice being in your center observing, not coldly, but not attached either. Just observe. What if you're all divine beings capable, like an angel, of observing a world that has no effect on you. Just walk, float about the world. Not war, not winning lotteries. You're so in spirit that you're immune to it all. And let that experience happen for the next minute or so.
of this world, a person, an event, tragedy, whatever, pulls you out of your center, makes you think fear, think harshly about someone, get upset, watch this carefully, that's when you forgive, which takes you where? Back to your center. When something's pulled you off center, you got caught up in the world for a moment. Your job, oops. Forgive them, they know not what they do. I forgive myself and I go back to my center. And in the, my center, I find my innocence. Notice that, look at that. That when you go out, you come back. And then when you come back, please notice you carry nothing of it. You're right back to your light. That's getting us back to our innocence. Where I choose not to judge you anymore. And I choose not to judge myself. We are capable of living this meditation every day. Pulled off, forgive, come back, and I'm back into my innocence. If you start thinking, but I lost my innocence for a moment and I went and judged, you're not in your innocence again. It's not false denial to say I'm going to come back. It's not denying responsibility. It's when I was crazy, when I went out there and got caught. Yes, I acted crazy, but that's not my world, God's world, the real world. What I'm feeling now is the real world. It is not a form of denial or irresponsibility. This is your right to keep coming back to your center. Centering your breath, gratitude. The outer world is just people dressed up for Halloween. People acting like creeps and ghouls, you know? People acting so frightening. That's just, it's just a costume. It's just an illusion. Thank you so much. Oh, how's everyone feeling? Good, good, thank you. Oh, stretch out a little bit. Okay. All right, we're going to take up our collection. Please be as generous as you can possibly be. We appreciate that. <clears throat> Hello. Oh, how nice. <laughs> Wait, is it a Halloween trick or is it a treat? <laughs> so sweet. Bless you. Oh! I want it. Do you know who I am? Yes. I'm not Yoko Ono. <laughs> In a pizza box, but no pizza. Isn't that. I'm a victim. I'm an innocent victim of this. But, but this is the kind of gift Michael would want. A little green acres, bread, and lots of butter. So she's got a Michael shirt. She's supposed to be me. You get it? Man. Man, you're hot. Um. Oh, she even put on a fanny pack. 
The black felt shoes. Man, you went all out, huh? Wow, look at this. Wow, that's the best looking me I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, thank you. She even did a little coloration here. That, that was bizarre. Um, you know, they said, did you see Julie? And, and you know, I never, I didn't recognize her until she came up here. I swear. So I thought, oh, it's somebody from out of town and they're having the person bring me a gift, which I thought, they know I don't like gifts. They know, so why would they be bringing somebody? And then when she stood up here and looked at me, I just went, I went, oh, that's Julie. But I still didn't. And then she goes, do you recognize me? I'm, of course I did, which I didn't. Until one second before she asked, I'm like, oh, it's Julie. Then I'm looking going, Wait a minute. I'm starting to get downloads from the Lord. I swear, I'm so dense sometimes. I'm like, oh! And it starts coming together as I'm looking at her. That's a trip. Thank you. Wow. I never look so good, man. You beautiful girl. Thank you. So. Your generosity is appreciated. Let's do our prosperity prayer. It's on your bulletins and it's also on the papers in front of you. Heartfelt, together please. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you. So we will do our closing prayer. But first, can anybody share what they heard or learned today that made the most sense or that could be the most helpful to you? Yes. Well, whenever you speak about forgiveness of others, I immediately reminded forgiveness of self. Yes. That forgiveness involves self, not just others. Yes. Anyone else? What did you learn or hear today? And what can you apply? And it's about forgiveness and whatever else you heard. Yes. Right. I mean, right? See, w when you're weighed down with stuff of life, it's harder to smile. It's harder to feel alive, like innocence, aliveness, right? The world, heavy, heavy, heavy stuff, but don't take it on. And it's tricky because the world will shame you for acting so innocent. I mean, I've had my hand slapped for that, like, you know, why are you smiling as a kid? What are you smiling about? And I was trained. If I went home from school and looked happy, they'd go after it. So I started learning to not be happy. You see what I'm saying? It's this programming. But it's still deeply in me, a soul choice. And one day I get to go, oh, no, that's no longer my choice. That's what we have to do. Say goodbye to the crazy programs we took on. There's nothing wrong with you in your innocence. The next time you're intimate, whether it's with yourself or someone else, try to be in that state of, I want this to feel, you know, like new, something new, like love, like it never felt before. Bring fresh newness to it, innocence. And when you, when you cook and when you make cookies, stop thinking about the damn calories. <laughs> Do you think one-year-olds are like, this is going to go straight to my hips? <laughs> no, just eat it and shut up. Do what kids do. Can I have another one? I mean, honestly, just come, try, come back. Hugs, and, and I know, one in every so many hugs, somebody will have a weird thought, and you, then you'll be tempted to shame all hugs. No, just, just that one. Don't do it. But allow, allow love, allow peace, allow costumes and playfulness, laughter, silliness. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's a beautiful thing. If you die and didn't write a book and you didn't have children and so on and so on, nobody on the other ca side cares. But if you can report back on the other side and that you smiled and that you were alive, that means you deserve to stay on the other side. 
You, you, don't, you lose your need for incarnation and lessons because you let all that go. Did you make anyone smile? Did you, you know, tickle their ribs? Did you have fun? Did you, did you have playfulness? No, I was just so busy counting calories. <laughs> really? Well, we've got just the lifetime for you to go back at. <laughs> you know? I mean, just, okay. If that's what's on your mind, then that's what you go back and experience. But you don't need it. The fun and the love. And somebody's going to slap your hand now and again because that's this world rejecting love. But you know what? Do your best. Take a breath. Sometimes take one step back to breathe and recalibrate, but don't take five back. One step back, recalibrate, and then move forward again. And you can't say that there's not a single person that would support you. There's got to be someone. The one sitting next to you, someone in this kind of a center, someone in a group study group you do, someone in a, on a sacred site store, someone somewhere is willing to, to hug. You see? What can you do to be that present, safe for people to go, you know, do you mind? And I've done that on flights when people are struggling and in pain and I could just see it. And, you know, do you need anything? I've had people lay down and fall asleep, leaning on me and, you know, and I don't even know them. There need be no, and they'll, they'll say, who are you? Uh, my name is Michael. That's all. I don't go, and here's my business card. <laughs> Light worker. <laughs> no. I just go, my name is Michael. What do you do? Uh, you know, just, I don't know. You know, I don't advertise it. The presence, just be it, and you wouldn't need to advertise it. I'm not saying you're wrong for advertising your business. I'm saying the presence. It's really beautiful. And there's been the odd thing now and again. When you're there for people, there is, it can be tempting for people to misconstrue or think, of course, those things happen. Just take one step back, breathe, recalibrate, and then come forward again. Be the innocent presence for other people's innocence to come out and find you. And we dance, man, dance together. Thank you for listening. Please stand for our closing prayer. Thank you to those of you who chose to dress up the chaplains, great job. And the non-chaplains, yeah, you saw our note in our newsletter, so we appreciate you being playful. And those of you who didn't get that memo or didn't choose to dress up, the fact that you clapped and laughed and enjoyed, we still appreciate that support of this kind of silliness. All right? Hmm. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. We are the, love of God. the power of God protects us. We are the, power of God. the presence of God watches over us. We are the of God. Wherever we go, God, God is, is, I am, we are, and so it is. Peace be with you all. Thank you.